We were expecting Fairfax to be fossils everywhere, just right next to the Brea Tar Pits. We were like, ah, oh, La Cienega, there's not going to be anything here. And it's raining fossils. I never thought I'd be doing this sort of paleontology. We're digging out the actual station box. This is where, when the subway is completed, you'll come down to catch the train. We go a little bit deeper and we'll have the tunnel boring machines come through. They'll intersect with the station box and continue on towards Beverly Hills. Right now we're 40 so feet below Wilshire. We have La Cienega down at the end of the station. The La Brea Tar Pits are east and up about 30 feet. In Southern California, you dig 10, 20 feet down and you're getting Ice Age sediments. You pretty much find mammoths, mastodons, snake tooth cats. As we're going farther down, we're going back in time. So we're about to hit the marine area. So that's about 100,000 years ago when this was all underwater. We're going to start seeing very beachy sands and hopefully find some really cool marine fossils. We did find a few different whales at La Brea. It's so much earth being moved and we get to be right here to see anything that might be exposed. It really helps us find more in situ, so actually not pushed around, not rolled down a mountain or something. If they run into something, I'll assess the situation, see how long I need to divert them. There's plenty of other places for them to work. So the bison horn that we just found was found right where I'm standing. I found part of this hollow bone and the texture looked very much like a bison horn that I'm already working on. And another co-worker found a, a vertebra five, six feet over. So we each started working on excavating. We'll transport it to our lab and then we'll start cleaning it. So I'm really hoping this might be a bison latifrons horn because it is so big, but we won't know for certain until it's cleaned and we get it properly identified. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Ledger and we are here at the Cogstone Resource Management Laboratory in Riverside, California, where we're looking at the most recent specimen found from Wilshire and La Cienega Station. This is Andy. This is the bison horn core from bison latifrons, which is the long-horned bison species. You'll notice that there is a large section of bone that's missing but the size of that gap is important. Neither of these specimens have been moved from how they were found. They were found with sediment in all of those gaps and we put them in this plaster jacket, which is a mixture of plaster and burlap, in their life and death position so that we could bring them to the lab exactly as they were found. Through the cleaning process, we now know how large that gap was. And right now we're looking at over two feet of bison horn. So we know we have the long horned form. So if you look around, we're surrounded by fossils and these are coming from the Purple Line expansion through the heart of Los Angeles. Metro's Purple Line expansion for a paleontologist is a dream come true. It is an opportunity of a lifetime. Paleontologists love to dig in the dirt, but People typically frown on if we want to rip up a road and dig a giant hole. And when I say giant hole, I mean a thousand feet long by 80 feet wide and nearly a hundred feet deep. Those are big holes to dig through the middle of Los Angeles. But with the subway, they're able to make caverns that large and every scoop full of dirt that comes out of that big hole, we get to look through for the fossils. So we're finding a treasure trove of specimens and we're getting just such a variety of animals from the Ice Age. Statistically, less than 1% of life on Earth fossilizes. So anytime you find a fossil, it's incredibly rare and we're incredibly lucky. We're excited to one day ride the Purple Line and to know that 40 feet above our heads, we were finding hundreds of fossils. So far, including all of our microfaunas, including the gopher jaws and fish bones and rodent teeth, we've found over 2,000 fossils. It has been an amazing opportunity that is telling a fantastic story about Los Angeles. We've been working on the Purple Line for about three years now, and our very first set of discoveries came in a rush. We found part of a mammoth skull, part of a mastodon tooth, and then we found this beautiful specimen here. This is Hayden. This is a juvenile Colombian mammoth skull, and it's in beautiful shape. We've got both of its tusks. One tip is broken, but we could repair that. But there's so much detail you can learn from looking at the end of a specimen. 
Those little tiny lines, that pattern are called Schrager lines, and that tells us which species we're looking at. So we know this is Columbian mammoth and not Mastodon. Often we get individual specimens that are beautifully preserved. This is one molar from the Pleistocene horse. We can still see the chewing surface on that individual tooth. Sometimes we find more than just an isolated tooth. We find the whole front of the snout. This is the front of a horse's mouth and its incisors. But you can see the bone preservation is beautiful. We just wish we knew what happened to the rest of the specimen. But sometimes we do find specimens that are complete. This is one of my favorite. This is one knuckle of a mammoth toe. Think how big their feet are, that just one little bone is literally the size of my hand. And the bone preservation is impeccable. We still have the outer layer. It's, we can still see the perfect articulation surfaces. These bones have not permineralized or petrified. They haven't turned into stone yet. This is all still bone from when these animals were walking up and down what's now Wilshire Boulevard. So these two bones are actually the same bone. This is a tibia, which you would think of as the shin bone, but this one is from a bison, and this one is from the camelops, an ancient ancestor to modern camels. And as hard as it is to imagine camels walking up and down Wilshire Boulevard, during the Ice Age, they were here. Camels are actually native to Southern California. But this camelops bone is interesting. The end of this bone is missing. It didn't break. If you look closely at these edges, this was chewed off. This bone was gnawed on by some animal, probably a dire wolf or something similar, after it died. Why? To get at that marrow cavity on the inside. That's where lots of nutrients are contained within the bone. So we can even see evidence of predation. These were the first carnivore bones that we found from the Ice Age, and we were incredibly excited to say that all of those animals that are being found at the La Brea Tar Pits we're finding naturally in the LA Basin. The systematics are skewed. At the tar pits, they find mostly carnivores because they're there for the easy meal for that prey-type animal that got trapped in the tar. We're not working in asphaltic sediments. This is natural, dry, clean dirt. And so we're seeing a natural death assemblage. These are just animals that died from either being hunted or dying naturally from disease or old age. But we know that the carnivores were still present even in that area outside of the tar pits. It is a very healthy sign of this blooming ecosystem that was happening in Southern California. We know that for every herd of bison, somewhere hiding on a hilltop was probably a pack of dire wolves or a family of saber-toothed cats just analyzing which animal would make their next meal. The story of paleontology is an interesting one. It captivates the imagination. It brings the past to life. Everything we learn about the past gives us clues about what's happening now and what could possibly happen in the future. Each fossil adds a piece to the story and shows us how the, how the planet has changed, how the ecosystem has changed, and how it might continue to change moving into the future.